Hi, this is Sean McVeigh with Sean's Outdoor Adventures, and I'm going to give you a few reviews on some mechanical releases. So this year, I decided to try a few different releases, and I had some issues with some, and I want to share that information with you so you can make a decision if you're going to purchase a release. Again, these are just my insights and opinions. There could be people out there who have very different opinions. They might like something that I don't, etc. So to begin, I tried out a few handheld releases this year, and I started with True Ball products because you know I've um, I started shooting with release years ago, like you know, seven years ago or so. And the local archer shop had True Ball was one of their main ones that they had. And I liked the the aspect of True Ball that the the release head closes on its own. So you know you pull the trigger and you let it go and it closes. You don't have to push the trigger forward and make any kind of click noise like they most of them used to. So I kind of like that and I used their products for many years. So to start off, when I went to trying out a handheld release, I tried the Max Pro 4 and the, the head closes just like that. I had some problems with it right away. So I bought two of them and I went to their website and they have videos on there on how to adjust the sensitivity of it and everything. So I followed their instructions perfectly and and one of the things they say is you should put a little Loctite on the this, this screw that you put in there for the tension to hold it in place. So I did that, and I guess some of that Loctite got, a, got gummed up on something in there. I'm not quite sure, but it no longer closed on its own. I had to force the uh, thumb button back over to close it, and so that was the first problem. But even before that, even before I messed with any of that, one thing I noticed right away is it takes a, what I would say a lot of force to trigger the release to make it fire. So with a handheld release, you grip it with your you know fist like this, you pull back, and you you generally anchor it you know behind your jaw like, <clears throat> like this. Excuse me. <laughs> and in that particular kind, you trigger it by pressing on the lever with your thumb. Now you want to be able to press that without it causing your arm and hand to move because that'll throw off your shot. But what I found with that particular release, it just took too much force to have a nice consistent release every time. So I really wasn't liking that. I adjusted it to a lighter tension release setting according to their instructions and I began to have problems. So I could have 30, 40 shots that were fine, but then I would have one where it would actually pop off the string and I'd punch myself in the face. And the reason was just because of the way the tension was. And, and I could shoot another 15, 20 shots and then it would happen again. So it wouldn't happen every time, but when you try to get it set more sensitively, it misfired. So it was not a reliable release. I didn't like it, so I got rid of that one as well. Then I tried a Spot Hog Whippersnapper. It was a three finger release and there were some differences to it, but I, I'll be honest, I loved it. I mean, I really loved the release and I would actually recommend it to anybody. A couple of differences I noticed right away was you could really adjust the sensitivity of the thumb trigger just to where you liked it and you didn't have to worry about misfires. And so it was, I was able to re release it very smoothly because I was able to get that setting just where I liked it. Whereas I didn't have that sensitivity that I, I couldn't get that with the true ball. The other, the, well, the one thing that um, I would say was a little bit of a drawback with the whippersnapper, well, there was two things. One, you have to push the button over with your thumb to click it in so it makes a click noise. And if you're ever in a hunting situation where you have to make a second shot, you know, that click noise could alert the deer or your game animal and they could spook before you get the shot. It's not that big of a deal though, and I was willing to, you know, go with it. Um, the one other difference is that it didn't have a pivoting head, so when you would, when I would, the way I would anchor is I would put my fist right behind my jaw like this, and that would actually twist the D-loop a little bit. It did not seem to affect my accuracy at all, but, you know, I didn't like the thought of, you know, twisting the D-loop, but, you know what? Like I said, it didn't seem to affect the uh, accuracy, so it wasn't a big deal to me. The only reason why I didn't stick with it is because I found that I have really bad arthritis in my hands. And um, after one week of shooting, my hand was so sore that I just couldn't shoot. 
So I realized I'm going to have to stick with the wrist strap style release. So I got rid of the, um, the spot hog. And I had this idea going into this hunting season that I was going to try to use certain products and see if maybe I could maybe get sponsored by that particular company or whatever. And since I always use Trueball, I went back to a Trueball wrist strap style release and I also bought their brand of sight and I'll talk about sights in, different, in a different video because I have some things to say about that. But anyway, so I went back to this and since I filmed my own hunts, I thought it would be good to try the kind that just hooks onto the D-loop. It doesn't clip on, it just hooks on. And let me also throw this in. One of the reasons I decided to try going to the handheld release is I figured I can clip it on the bow and I can do the videoing and then when it comes time to shoot I can just grab that and go. I don't have to worry about clipping anything on. So that's why I even tried it. But now since I had to go back to a wrist strap style I went to the hook and this is the Fang series by Trueball. I'm going to just step up and show you. So this is the Fang series. There's a trigger here and they have two different style triggers. One's sweep back like this one and one comes straight out. And um, it's supposed to, if the one that comes straight out, you're able to shorten it up more and you'll be able to get a little more draw length with your bow according to what they say. Anyway, so for me, I always buy a, um, a belt buckle style wrist strap release. Like I don't like the uh, Velcro kind because it's hard to get it the same exact way every time. With this, I can put it in the same buckle belt loop every single time and I know my hand's going to be in the same place when I'm at full draw. And that helps with accuracy. And um, so, so one thing I noticed right away uh, within the first week after I purchased this release, and I'm holding this because this is my original strap. As you can see, I have the one with the the release head on it and this is a strap with no release head on it. The problem I had was about every 10 shots this um, strap would slide out that, were, that the uh, release head is hooked onto, and so I'd have to reach farther and farther to get it. I'd have to stop shooting after like 10 shots, take it off, tighten it back up, put it back on. Now I was at a 3D shoot where I was having to do that every couple, sh every couple targets, I'd have to stop and tighten it up. And the guy in front of me had one too, and his was doing pretty much the same thing, only he was at full draw, and he actually let down because, well he actually went whoa, and then let down. His slid out a half of an inch, which is far when you're talking about this kind of stuff. He's at full draw and his hand slid back a half of an inch. He let down, took the release off, and he had another one with him and he switched to that. So I called them up because I thought, first I thought maybe I just got a bad one, but then I thought maybe, you know, maybe they redesigned the strap because this strap obviously doesn't work right. So I talked to the guy on the phone. He said, oh yeah, we had a problem with some of the ones that went out. Here, I'll send you a new one. So he sent me the, the base part and this, and I've been shooting it for about two weeks now. But before I get, you know, say anything else, I want to say this about the buckle. If you're going to buy a wrist strap with the belt buckle, this is why I bought, you know, I had no problem buying this one. It has the double metal buckle part. So when you put the strap through and you buckle it, it goes back down into that metal one and you can see it holds the strap down. And, you know, that's not going to, you know, be able to come unbuckled. The one that they sent me had a different buckle. It has a single buckle. So let me just take this off and show you. See, it only has one, one side of the metal. It doesn't have it coming off the other side and they have this little loop part. I, this is a terrible design, folks, and I'm going to show you why right now. Many of us are hunters, and when you're walking through the woods with your thing on, it doesn't take much for a branch to pop that out, and look at how easy that, it just pops right out. I mean, very easily. So you could have your release, you could be going through a thicket, you know, to get to your spot, and your release can be coming undone on you, Hopefully you'll feel it come off before it hits the ground or whatever, but anyway, so that's the first problem I have with this particular one that they sent me. The second problem I have is I shoot with this finger. This, this release sits cockeyed on my wrist and the release triggers all the way over at my pinky. That's not anywhere near where I need it to be for my shooting. So it doesn't, this particular one that they sent me, the way that this design is cut, it does not sit properly on the wrist. 
this release needs to be completely redesigned the, from the from the wrist strap to the way they're buckling this in now i will say that i shot this release for years this is a true ball release completely different design for the strap in here it never ever once moved on me so the bottom line is they tried a new design and folks this design does not work at all until they change that my encouragement to you my friends out there is don't buy this release that's my encouragement now i'm sure there could be people out there who love the release and haven't had any problems i'm just saying to you if you're in the market there's a risk that you're going to have issues not just me i haven't just seen me with the issues but other people and i'll also say this i've been shooting this release this one now for about two weeks and now this one the 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 strap part itself this nylon strap that comes through is beginning to wear a little bit and now it is beginning to slip through the metal so this whole design right here no good people at trueball if you happen to watch this video um, i'm going to tell you you need to completely redesign this one uh, immediately uh, even like don't wait till next year till your next product line comes out do it now uh, because right as of right now um, I've actually been surprised at how much I've had issues with those products this year and even though they were willing to you know send me another strap they you know they stand behind their product uh, it, the design is no good right now so in the future I mean I'm kind of out of money to spend on on new things to try this year so I'm gonna to have to stick with this release and I'm actually gonna rig something up to try to keep it from uh, sliding. Like I've had, I have some ideas, but I'm gonna rig some up just to get me through the season. But next year, I'm gonna be trying out some other brands and seeing if I like them better. Um, so that's my input on mechanical releases. Now let me say this. I'm, I'm gonna ask you for your help and input, you my viewers. I'm going to be doing some other product review videos here. Now I'm going to do one on sights because I've switched sights. I'm going to do one on arrow rests because I've had all kinds of arrow rest issues this year. And arrow rests are expensive. And um, so I've I bought like three or four different ones all over $100. It's, it, this summer I've been trying to you know get new products and get solidified on what I want to use for this season. But it has killed me financially this year just because I've had issues and, and um, things not working. So anyway. I'm going to do arrow rests, sights, and I'm also going to do some on some archery targets, things like that. Here's where I need your help. At one point, because I got, I got so sick of spending all this money and you know, it was straining me and my, my family having, having me constantly spend more money to get something that works, um, I decided to contact a particular company about a particular product to see if they'd be willing to let me have one and I would do like a review video on it and post it on my you know, YouTube channel and they could get publicity that way. And when I first presented it to them, the guy actually said to me, how much would you charge us to do that? And I was like, wow, you know, I've never kind of had that response. And I try to keep the humble, humble approach, the realistic approach. Like I am getting more viewers, that's a fact. But I'm still, I mean, I'm coming from nothing like I had nobody at first nobody watching my views and now I have like 6,000 subscribers or somewhere there around I, over a million views on my channel that's exciting but I'm still kind of young in this whole thing and I don't know what kind of value I bring so I'm asking you the people who view my videos help me out give me some input here because I messed that deal up I said to that guy, look, I don't know what's, what to say, what to charge, because one, I don't want to say I'll charge you this much, but then it doesn't work out for you. I, I would want your product to, to sell because of my video. And I don't know if, it, if my doing a video on it is going to bring that. So I didn't want to you know, shortchange their company. I was trying to be respectful. And in the end, they withdrew and they decided to just they, they basically said if you all right you can buy our product obviously but we're not going to give you one and we're not going to pay you to do a video on us it's because i didn't know what to say to them so here's what i'm asking you my viewers please make a any any impression you have on these product review videos 
post a comment below. So one, here's one thing I'm looking for. If you've never heard of a particular product that I review, say that. Sean, I've never heard of this product before. And the other thing I want you to say is, did you find my review helpful in making a decision to purchase a product? Then I can go to a company in the future, if that ever happens again, and say, here's the value. My viewers are saying that my opinion matters to them, and they're going to make a buying decision based on what I say on a product. So that helps me assign a value, and I can say, okay, I would charge you X amount to do this video for you. Um, I'm going to end this video now, and then I'm going to do one on sites, and then one on arrow rest. So please stay tuned and thanks for your input and comments below. Also, like, subscribe, and share. God bless.